What's your carnal theory? Hello, everyone, and welcome. I am Abba, and today on Carnal Theory, we have a guest co-host, Diana, who is my Six Bios research and content manager. Diana, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, and, my pleasure. And for our regular listeners and watchers, you will recognize our guest this week. We are talking with Karitia. She is Hi. back with us, and we are so excited. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good to be back. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I'm happy that, uh, you know, all the stars aligned and serendipity that I get to be on Carnal Theory once again. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Our pleasure. As a uh, intro and reminder for our listeners, Kritia is a kink practitioner, BDSM expert, educator, an artist, a business person and so 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 much more it um it starts to get a little bit ridiculous but it's most it's on the side of greatness um also a uh, co-founder of both karata house and the educational platform oh yes please which we will be getting updates on if you would karitia please kick us off what what have you brought for our our, our deliberation today so today I've brought the carnal theory of intentional expression is powerful and desirable. Intentional expression is powerful and desirable. Yeah. The first word that jumped out to me when you sent that over was intentional. Yeah. I personally feel like the past getting closer and closer to two years of the change of <laughs> of the times um that intentional has been kind of one of the watch words that intentional um uh, relationships and who we are engaged with mm. that that has become far more uh important in people's lives and just the in the vein of life is fleeting, how we can live more intentionally and, and, and gain the benefits from that. I'm just wondering, intentional expression, that's even more, that's a very specific direction. What does that mean for you? So intentional expression, I think for me is, is this overall arcing way I wanna live my life. Like the path I really wanna walk, a path that's really, considered and thought about and then I'm sharing those things with other people uh, I think I talk about intentional spaces I talk about intention a lot like the why behind something the fact that you've given something real consideration as to why it's present in your life and also to keep it present so I can continuously keep updating myself Right, I can continuously keep challenging myself to be in this life that, as you say, is fleeting. Right? You never know what's going to happen next. So if you're going to do something, do it with intention, do it with purpose, do it with feeling, do it with love, do it with passion. Um, I think that's what it is for me. Uh, and when I look at intention when I continuously act like a five-year-old child and go why <laughs> then I can dig in a lot more I could find out a lot more about myself and the ones around me and who I want to have close and not close and why like just constantly being this five-year-old I love it it's really fun <laughs> thank you for the reminder yeah, thank you for the underlined reminder of intention because uh, there's here in the US, there's a lot of push to just get back to normal, normal the before times of normal, which yeah. um, which which resonates with me. There, there's a lot of that that I would like as well. I'm not mm. in in a in a huge rush. Um, I have my hesitations, but with that in thinking that way we miss all the lessons or we 
just completely brush aside the potential lessons gained. And in what you're raising, this intentional expression, this intentional living and awareness and presence, Mm. it's important to remember that it is powerful and desirable, 100%. That is a, a beautiful, beautiful state theory and statement. I, I think, I think the, the the thing that's really become apparent, I think especially to people around me, is that um, understanding or being with ourselves and expressing who we are then to others is something we've not done. Mm. Societally, we've not done it. We we don't express ourselves. We expect people to read our minds, right? Of course they know what I want. They know me, but they don't. They don't know you. I don't know, sometimes I don't even, you don't even know yourself. I don't know myself, right? How's the other person who I want to be intimate with also going to know if I don't intentionally take the time to tell them. (laughs) You know, why is it that it's so hard for us to express, speak to, name what we like and enjoy when it comes to sex, when it comes to attraction, when it comes to desire? Because often we don't know because we've not done that internal study of ourselves to find out what it is that we actually like. And if we don't know, we're too scared to say that we don't know. So we're spending all this time guessing. And then when it doesn't go right, then we want to blame. And I'm like, no, I'm done with that. I'm done with the blaming and the shaming and the making people feel guilty. No, let's talk about it. Let's be open, right? Let's have the conversation so we can actually have as much and as maximum fun as we want together. What if somebody wants to become a sex worker? Then like, because we have, if you want to become a doctor, yeah, you just go, you find the resources, you know how your life's going to be, right? But what if you want to become a sex worker? That should also be a choice in, in the whole conversation of we should legalize it, it is actual work. Um, so yeah, the question I guess would be, um, what would you tell somebody that, is thinking of this as an option and they want to choose it what should they do what should they keep what should they do yeah see this is this is something that uh is an awesome question right i got into sex work because i felt confident that i could take care of myself other people get into into sex work because they feel like they have no other option and other people get into it because they recognize that they have really something to offer and they want to be at service to others. Um, I think all of those things are valid. And I think my my key thing is know your boundaries. If you want to get into sex work, know what your body boundaries are, what your emotional boundaries are, and what your mental and psychological boundaries are before you get into it. Um, I think it is something where it is a job. It's genuine work. It is um, your your part physical interaction. Your part therapist, part psychologist, right? But there's no training for it. And I find this to be, frankly, mind blowing. I want to interject. <laughs> I'm to- I'm so with you, and I want to interject on something because. What you're bringing up, I have personally grappled greatly with mm-hmm. around what we offer at My Sex Bio and what I have personally come to believe. Um, I want to put the preface that I a million percent believe in education and believe that like deep, thorough training is immensely useful and has great benefit to society and uh, people's mental health and and therefore entire lives. Mm. And in the same way that being a listening ear is well understood to be a form of friendship and therapy, just being there for someone, you've already mentioned holding space 
doesn't have to require deep, immense training. Should do I believe that it should be in our basic education system and something that will, like is actually a skill to be taught in school? Yes, it's not, and yet we are still able to learn it because I believe that that is carnal to us. Yeah, holding space and listening. Yeah, is carnal. It has what it is part of what has kept us alive. Yeah. It is in our evolution to listen and absorb and then storytell in different ways and mm-hmm. take that information received, process it for our own good, and depending upon what our personalities are, share it for others to also be able to absorb and utilize. Like mm-hmm. we, in my opinion, I don't have the science <laughs> on hand to back this up, but I, I, I deeply believe that we have the carnal ability to be therapists and psychologists and it and, and and sex in these intimate moments and conversations you don't even have to be having the act having an act of sex or whatever that means to you mm-hmm. it in that intimacy it, it allows some other doors to be opened it allows some vulnerability and therefore trust mm-hmm. um limbs to be extended hands to be extended to be able to say like you know would you like to can can, can i trust you or will you trust me can we talk yeah. about these things and what a beautiful positive job and offering to the world to bring yeah like, and this, this is something that i i struggle with all the time because I think the reason I fell into sex work was because the education system failed me completely. Right, I have an education, I feel very fortunate, I'm very privileged. Um, I, I, I speak English um, as my first language, I speak French as my second, I'm aiming to learn German at the moment. Like I have access, but as a system, education is violent to me. As, as a person who's dyslexic, as a person who's neurodiverse, this system has never been for me. The way I've learned to do what I've done, what I do, is just that, is to experience it, is to recognize I want to be in uh, relating dynamics, whatever that is, with others all the time. Because that's the way I learn. I learn best by doing something. I learn best by getting my hands in, touching, um, being present, listening, like you said, like listening is such an underrated skill, right? Being present, fully, without question, present for another person, that's a superpower. But it's not valued because it's not something that's written on paper. It's not valued because it's not quantifiable. It's not what the degree is called. The degree isn't called listening powers. It's called psychoanalysis or therapy or whatever. A therapist or like, it's it's one of these things. It's like something you want to quantify. But what happens to all of us who aren't quantifiable in that way? I have skills. I have value. But because I don't hold a degree, I'm not allowed to do certain things. The reason I can do what I do is because in Germany, it's legal to do sex work. It's hard, but it's it's legal. Everywhere else is illegal. UK, it's illegal. US, it's illegal. Spain, it's illegal. Right? And there are other places where basically I'd end up in jail. If they even knew what I did. Yeah. I think on that note, there was a question that we were meaning to ask you too, which is, Hmm. um, there is this whole debate around, um, you know, if legalizing sex work is what's going to solve the problem. Mm. Because, uh, of course, like legalization is a very important part of the whole mm. process of recognizing sex work as sex work and mm. taking the stigma out of there. But even in places where they have done that, you know, certain certain things have not really changed too much. So I guess this brings us back to where where the problem is. It's not really because in, in the end, policies and laws are just, you know, an expression of 
other things, underlying things, personal stories that then become, you know, the story of a community. So, yeah. So yeah. So I guess I don't know if if you have thoughts on where does that really you know come from exactly? Why that need of just telling so, our people not to do something and you know? Yeah. See, this is the thing. I think what happened or what has happened is that. Uh, from a colonialized mindset, sex empowers. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel great in your body. It makes you realize what pleasure is. It makes you realize, oh, I have a connection to this person, even if it's a brief one, right? It puts you and grounds you in your body so that you can walk forward and do other things. Owning our bodies Mm -hmm. at all. Exactly. And this is the thing, they don't want you to own your body. Thank you. Uh, I just want to round out the conversation. Could you could you state the carnal theory that you'd brought for our consideration today one more time? Yeah. So the carnal theory that I brought today was intentional expression is powerful and desirable. And uh, we encourage all of our listeners and watchers, please reach out to us with questions. Um, you can reach us on our Instagram page at Carnal Theory or our main page at My Sex Bio. Please reach out to Caritia on her on, on their Instagram uh, at Caritia C A R I T I A. Karada House at Karada K A R A D A underscore House. And the platform, oh yes, please, with wonderful online resources, which is at oh yes, plz underscore, and you will have some fun. Uh, Educate yourselves, empower yourselves, go forth. (laughs) Go forth, enjoy. Thank you so, so much, Abby. Thank you, Diana. Thank you for having me back uh, here on Carnal Theory. Uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate the work that you're doing. And uh, thank you for everybody who's watching and listening. Uh, I hope this offered some inspiration for you to continue to critically inquire about yourself, who you are and what you want. Uh, Boundaries are very important. (laughs) Thank you. Till next time. Carnal Theory is produced by My Sex Bio, an educational platform empowering people like you to take command of your sexual biography. Our sound design is by David Usma and theme music by Men the Universe. Video editing is by David Usma and our assistant video editor and marketing coordinator is Maria Taruque. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, YouTube, and Spotify at My Sex Bio. Visit our website and join our e-letter at mysexbio.org and support our work by joining our Patreon. Thank you.